Now we're going to explore Import and Export ASCII from the right click of File menu. But first we're going to start off with Export ASCII. So if we click on that, this will bring up the Export ASCII dialog box. First let's navigate to where we want to save to. So I'm going to call this Test02. Open. Now I'm going to now we choose the range. So I'm going to leave it at 100 to 200. Increment is the increment of keyframes that will be baked on export. The value of 1 will bake a keyframe on every frame and the value of 2 will bake a keyframe on every other frame. This will also work if you are exporting curves generated from expressions. The column fields allow me to change the order of X and Y to match the target application. Here we're setting 1 for X and 2 for Y. OK, so if I now bring that in on the text editor we can see that we've got 100 frames and the first column is for X and the second column is for Y as we set in the exporter. Let's bring that curve back in now so let's hide these curves by wrapping that up there. Let's have a new transform and if I now right click and say import ASCII you can see that I get this error that's because I need to set keys first so if I click OK now if I say set key and now if I say import ASCII this brings up the import ASCII dialog box so now you can see it's remembered the path and we can double check that yeah that's all correct lines to skip or if we wanted to skip any lines that had header information start at frame 100 well that's what we want X increment is where we set how often we want keyframes the curve we just exported was set to 1 so let's leave it at 1 the Y scale will add a multiplier to the Y value and is used to normalize absolute pixel values or color lookups again we can reorder the column information but that's how we want it so let's click OK and now you can see we have the same curves except we've got a keyframe on every frame let's select all these curves with command A now let's delete and let's move on to import time value ASCII before we bring the file in let's look at what it looks like in a text editor we can see that the ASCII and time format is slightly different in the fact that it has three columns. Column 0 is for frame numbers, column 1 is for X values and column 2 is for Y values. So we have frames on 1, 5 and 10. Let's go back to Nuke and bring that in. This is where we navigate to the file, so let's navigate to it. Here it is. With these two column fields we can reorder X and Y but we want it set to 1 and 2. Bring it in, hit A and now we can see that that curve has been brought in. We've got keyframes on 1, 5 and 10 and these are the values that we set. Then we have the export discrete LUT which will not work in the curve editor but it's for color lookup so let's get one of those up. The graph here has the same navigation and controls as the curve editor so all your tricks that you've just learnt we can use here. Let's make a quick curve I'm going to draw that. Choose export. As before navigate to the folder to save to. We want three channels red, green and blue and to sample 256 values from 0 to 1 and the result will be scaled by 4095 in Y because discrete LUTs are not floating point numbers but integers we can put a comment in for the header let's keep exported from Nuke and export let's have a quick look at the file this is the discrete LUT header with the channels and the output scale including our comment and these are the scaled values if we go back to that export box and now select 3D Max compatible from here and then save that now look at it in the text editor you'll see you get a different header of information like this which is compatible with 3D Max now we're going to look at the edit menu so let's start with cut so that's going to if I choose a selected uh, key that will cut it so now that's cut to the clipboard and then if I now choose delete that will delete that selected point I can undo that with command Z one two for some reason it's showing me the other curve let's just get rid of that curve now onto copy selected keys so let's select all then choose copy selected keys now let's have a fresh transform let's get rid of this or hide this transform put down some keys so that we can paste now choose 
paste and we have that same curve that we copied. If I undo that, one thing to note, it's always going to come in at the same X value. So if I move this playhead and then here choose the set key and then paste again, it's still going to come back in at that frame 100 which is where I copied it from. Let's get rid of that. So select all and delete. Well, I'm just going to use the hotkey backspace. Let's go back to this transform here. Okay, so now I'm just going to look at the translate knob. Then I'm going to select all. I'm going to go to copy oops, copy curves. And then not look at that one, but look at transform 2. Go back to there. Set key and paste. And now we get to see both the curves. Now let's look at copy links. So we've copied those links there. Now let's load this transform here. Set key. Uh, let's hide the transform one. And now if we paste, we can see that in the node graph here we've got an expression arrow. And if we have a look here with edit expressions, we can see that it's been linked via an expression. Now on to generate keys, so let's set the key first. Click on the curve, put in the expression sin brackets t, which is going to give us a sine wave. Choose generate. Now start frame 100, let's choose end frame 120. Increment 1, so that's a key frame on every one. Let's scale it this time by 2. And let's hit OK. And now we can see that we've got keyframes from 100 to 120. Let's select some keys, choose move, and now in the animation dialog box type plus 2, and now they should move over to the right. And they have. And then if I was to go back to here and say minus 4, they will go to the left. And then if we were to do plus 2 in Y. Oops. It'll move up. So that's the move. On to filter. Let's uh, select these keys. Let's use filter now to smooth these curves. So let's go uh, select all. And then choose filter from the edit menu. Now the only control you have in filter is the number of times to filter. So 1 is the least. And then if we were to undo that, and then oh, select all again, reapply the filter and say 4, you'll see that we get a, a greater smoothing. We can also change the interpolation of the frames. If we change that to constant, you can see that we now have a constant value until the next keyframe. We can set this per selection of keys, so we can have multiple interpolations on the one curve. So we just set this to constant. So now we could change this one here to linear and so now we've got two different behaviors on the one curve. So if we click here and click break we now have independent control. Lastly before and after. So after controls the animation after the last keyframe and by default is set to linear but we can change it to constant so if we go after constant and then before gives us the same controls but controls the animation before the first keyframe. That's the curve editor.